Let's begin the discussion by speaking to Peter Lerner, a former Israeli army spokesman who joins us now from Tel Aviv. Good to have you on the Newsmakers, Peter. So, essentially, is this bill saying instead of holding soldiers to account for abuses, let's just hide it. Let's just ban people from filming people, uh, filming our soldiers and, and protect them and not break their spirit. Is that what's happening here? Absolutely not. What we're actually seeing is a process that happens in the Israeli democracy where you see a bill suggested to the government and the government reviews it and then it comes back to parliament and eventually the end product is completely different to the beginning product. Well, well we I know what the roots of it are. The roots are saying we don't want to break the spirit of our soldiers because we see too many videos of our soldiers beating people up and attacking people. We don't like it. That's the roots of it. Just because it goes through a democratic process doesn't mean that at its inception it isn't pretty icky, right? I, I would say that there are actually two reasoning behind this bill. The first one would be populist politics, which is, of course, the politicians want to be the defenders of the defenders. They want to show to their electorate what they are doing in order to safeguard the soldiers uh, uh, on the ground. On the other hand, you have the operational component. And I think it's really interesting that we haven't heard what the military think about this bill. There has been no statement, no position, nothing that has been voiced publicly. And the military here know how to do that when that is the situation. And on the other hand, when you think about the military situation, their reality on the ground is one where, in fact, uh, you know, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict over the years is probably the most covered conflict in the world. And the military has been uh, uh, God operating that, right? in that situation which is extremely difficult. So I don't think personally from my experience that the, the military have a strong position against this. And I think what right. we will see is more right. political ac action on the political level, but we will right. see at the end of the day, we'll see something much watered, much down, which will uh, suggest that the soldiers will be able to conduct their law enforcement activities without being hindered by uh, you know, thousands of, and hundreds and sometimes uh, uh, the influence of cameramen that are trying to sometimes get into the news rather than being uh, uh, people that are following the news. Let me ask you very directly, as someone who was in the hot seat, was defending the IDF or the Israeli army at a time of conflict during the Gaza war and beyond, you were held to account. You were somebody who was all about transparency. You were all about check the footage, right? You were all about trying to defend what Israel was doing. This can't sit well with you because it looks like this is the government trying to cover things up. You want transparency, don't you, Peter? I would absolutely agree with the understanding that Israel is a democracy, and as a democracy, we will operate under the watchful eye of the world media, of Israeli media, and when it's critical, it will be critical. And when we need to do things better, we will do things better. So I, I would definitely suggest that there is definitely room for improvement, but I would say the reality on the ground suggests, you know, sometimes being on the ground with those cameras, while they contain some of the military activities, they serve sometimes to aggravate the situation of the rioters and protesters. Whereas we've seen uh, frequently when there are cameras on the ground, you see people becoming more violent, more extremists, using more means to attack, to shoot at, to uh, throw firebombs at the forces because they feel empowered sometimes by the presence of the camera. So I think it's a double-edged sword. I don't think the military have, as I said, they haven't said and put forward a prominent position on this issue. And I expect that they will not say that. And from a military's perspective, they understand that the area is saturated with cameras. It's a reality. It's an operational reality. But politicians will continue to do the political work. Okay. Peter Lerner, thank you very much for joining us here on the Newsmakers. Let's broaden out the discussion now and bring in former Israeli Deputy Foreign Minister Ambassador Danny Ayalon. In Paris, we have the Middle East representative of Reporters Without Borders, Sophie Amuth. And joining us from West Jerusalem is Martin Palag, the CEO of Imtirtsu, a grassroots Zionist organization claiming credit for the bill. I thank you all for joining us. Matan Palag, let me start with you. You must be proud. You guys helped table and push this through. But when you think about it, it looks as if you're trying to hide any potential accountability for Israeli soldiers. That's it, isn't it? Israel suffers from a very problematic phenomena. There, are, there is a very big difference between a reporter 
someone who uses a camera uh, to do his job, then an anarchist who, come, who uses a camera only as a tool to go and harass uh, uh, our soldiers in the borders. Now, because uh, all those uh, anti-Israeli organizations and activists uh, start to learn that if they're holding a camera, they can go whatever they want and go very close to the soldiers, they just use it again and again. So what we decided to do is promote the need uh, of a, a kind of a bill like this, because there is, again, a very big difference between a reporter who's doing his job and it is very uh, legit, then someone who just using a camera to do propaganda to okay. harass our soldiers in their war, and you, uh, this Mr. is Pellet, just unacceptable. If I can ask you, Beit Salem, Maxim, Watch Women, and Breaking the Silence, all Israeli human rights groups, do you consider them anti-Israeli groups? Because they are affected by this. They go and they film and document. First of all, they are not human rights uh, organizations at all. Those are uh, propaganda organizations that are funded from uh, uh, foreign governments from Europe. You have they get money to do propaganda okay. against Israel. That's, that's and an I'm opinion. not talking about their that's an opinion. You organizations, don't like but I'm talking about uh, the, yes, but I'm talking about the activity when B'Tselem or Breaking the Cells are coming with their cameras. If it's not bothering the soldiers from a far distance or something, I think it's okay. But when they're using the cameras to go to go very very close to the soldiers and uh, it makes the soldier uh, not uh, focus on the mission, right. then it's a uh, risk Okay, him. but these are all hypotheticals. It's very Interesting. Important to I've heard it. from you and Peter Lerner, all these hypotheticals. What if it bothers the soldier? What if it creates a situation where it's not great for the soldier? We have lots of concrete examples of when cameras have shown very real things. Danny Ayalon. We have Ilor Azaria execute someone who was already neutralized and wounded. We've had a disabled Palestinian have his wheelchair tipped over, an eight-year-old Palestinian girl having a bicycle taken away by soldiers. These were all caught on camera. We have concrete evidence, Danny Ayalon, of these things and no evidence really of these hypotheticals of breaking the spirit of the soldiers. <laughs> as a former totally ambassador, Danny Ayalon, Danny Ayalon, as a former ambassador, as a former deputy foreign minister, this is not a good look, is it? I'm certain you don't like this bill. Well, um, many in Israel do not like it. You know, Israel is a really a, a free, pluralistic, democratic society. And um, about all those uh, um, incidents that you mentioned, all those were brought into justice and Elor Azaria was sitting in jail. I would say that by and large, uh, of course, we have nothing to hide and we would like to see the press working as a press. But I think there is here something to say about provocation. And you know, when you talk about a military area or an area of conflict, it is uh, not just in Israel, but uh, all over the world, they, they cordon off, they close the area. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we are in a very, very complex situation uh, with, the, with the Palestinians because terrorists are embedded among these uh, civilians. And uh, when they see cameras, they would like to, to, to provoke. And sometimes, of course, there is uh, some ramifications. Okay. But uh, I, I can tell you one thing is that uh, um, you, the, the bill, you know, is it, just uh, in, in a very initial um, uh, stage and uh, if it comes to the, the Knesset with all the readings usually there is a lot of uh, uh, changes and uh, moderations because you know we, we have here not just uh, the Knesset you know in a, in a demo in the democracy Understood. you have again, a division of, certainly, of power so we have Mr. also Island, the but Supreme Court from, which can mix some uh, I, I, and I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I've heard this from Peter Lerner as well. You're both telling me in a democratic system, there's checks and balances, it will get watered down. That doesn't mean that the bill doesn't stink, right? I mean, you still have to admit that. You can't say soft. that just because... The bill is too just, soft. Okay, so we have Matan Pelek believing it's too soft. But Mr. Ayalon, that does not take away from the fact that the bill's just a bad bill, right? Yes, I would say the litmus test is the Supreme Court in Israel. If the Supreme Court in Israel accepts it uh, from uh, this constitutional point of view, uh, you know, with the freedom of movement, freedom of speech, and all the other freedoms, then uh, I would accept it. Uh, if not, of course, there will be right. some kind of a dilemma. 
a crisis between the authorities, but, but the rule of law always prevails. Okay, Sophie Anmer, you've been listening to various interpretations of this, and there seems to be a trend here where we're hearing that from many of the gentlemen here, there's a conflation. They're not so certain that a lot of people who claim to be reporters are actually reporters, and a lot of people who claim to be documenting the Israeli army's activities as human rights groups are there for good reason. Your response to that is what? Well, our response to that is, of course, this bill hasn't been passed yet, as you just said, but from what we see in it now, um, and from what you, these two gentlemen said as well, it seems that if a journalist ends up doing some work that is provocative, then maybe he's not really a journalist, which sounds a bit odd. Um, I understand that they are talking about organizations that are not organizations of journalists. However, journalists often use material that has been filmed by citizen journalists or eyewitnesses. So then it would become illegal to use this material, and then being a citizen journalist would become illegal as well. And also what the bill says now, it's it's the intention um, that will say if it is criminalized or not. But how will you determine the intention of the person? Mm -hmm. Will you say, oh, for this person, we know their political views, so surely they want to do harm uh, the morale of the soldiers or the security of Israel. Um, so we think in this day, this bill is worrying, and it could indeed uh, curb free speech and violate the right to inform. Right. Matan Peleg, this is what Bet Selim says in response to the bill. If occupation embarrasses the government, then it should take steps to end it. Visual documentation of life under occupation shall continue. It's a fact of life that no stupid bill will succeed in changing. Mr. Peleg, what do you think? Yeah, so again, again, uh, I will give you just a short example. In Har in Mount Hadar, uh, not far from Jerusalem, it was a terror attack. Uh, Right before the terror attack, it was a, a few women from a, a Mahsom Watch organization, organization to go to checkpoints, and they, they went to harass the soldiers, they went and uh, uh, called them a, a, a lot of names and cursed them. I think there is a difference between a reporter and someone who just wants to uh, um, uh, undermine the soldier's spirit. A reporter is someone that is professional, is coming to do his job. It is very easy to see the difference between them. And again, Israel is a democracy. Israel is a state who provides more human rights than any other country in the Middle East. Israel it provides stability uh, for all uh, the, the people that live here. This is a great country, and we need to defend it. Uh, unfortunately, because of terror and because of the resistance of the corrupted uh, PLO, uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, tragedies and violence in Judea and Samaria and in Gaza uh, because of the Hamas. And this is, but this is their fault. We are always try to do peace with our uh, neighbors. If they choose uh, other uh, things, they will uh, get hurt. What to do? Da Again, okay. what to do? Uh, let, let me let, let, me let that be the end of your answer. Well, Danny Ayalon, I want to ask you very specifically about the wording of the bill. It says anyone who films, photographs, and or records soldiers in the course of their duties with the intention of undermining the spirit of IDF soldiers and residents of Israel shall be liable to five years imprisonment. Now, all those ex examples, Mr. Ayalon, that I gave you earlier on of Elor Azaria, of various Israeli soldiers and policemen doing terrible things caught on camera, Arguably, all those things undermine the spirit of the protagonist. Not, not a terrible here. thing. To shoot a terrorist is not a bad thing. He executed it's a, a man who was already neutralized and injured, but he we're not here he to shoot, go through. He shoot a terrorist. Martin Pellet, he shoot a terrorist. We're not here to discuss it. He Sorry. only got nine months anyway. That could be another discussion anyway. Despite that, because you're disagreeing here with an Israeli court that sentenced him. But Danny Ayalon, back to my point. Isn't that very dangerous Orwellian language? Because yes. arguably, any of those incidents can be deemed to be undermining the spirit of the soldiers. You can't defend that, can you? Well, actually, you know, the bill, uh, the, the wording uh, actually has been copied uh, in many, many democratic countries uh, when military um, offensive or military action is taking place, they close the area. You know, if you look in Afghanistan or in Iraq or even at the... Uh, Kurdish areas in uh, in Syria when the Turks invaded there. You don't see reporters there because they close off the area. 
Uh, here in Israel, uh, we have uh, never wanted to uh, close the areas because we really have nothing uh, to hide. But when we see that this, uh, let's say, openness is being uh, abused, then I think you have to take some measures. But I can assure you that uh, the Israeli legal system and also the Israeli, the Israeli military legal systems, which is not, uh, uh, which is not under the command of the chief of staff, the, the military uh, justice department is under the uh, attorney general of the state. So they are an independent uh, authority, and so far they have been uh, quite effective in uh, deterring and in also uh, bringing into justice anyone who uh, was out of line. You know, okay. uh, but to the there point are of exceptions to the rule. But to the point of my question, we saw the, Abu Ghraib Gar and all others. Okay, but certainly, certainly. But to the point of my question, and you know, you talk about closing off areas. I think it's very difficult to close off East Jerusalem and the West Bank occupied under international law, settlements all over the place, very different situation, but let's not go down that rabbit hole. But to the point of my question, the wording of the bill itself, if you had to vote on it, if you were sitting as an MK in parliament, you're a member of the Knesset, if you had to vote for that wording, would you vote for it, yes or no? Well, I would, like, I, I would probably uh, consult with uh, the legal department. You know, the legal has also, the, the Knesset also has a legal uh, uh, advisor, which is also an, uh, an independent. I would like to compare it to other countries, and I would only compare it to democratic countries, not to uh, authoritarian uh, uh, countries. And uh, of course, once you bring everything into onto the scale, you know, it's a mixed bags, and then you try to find the best way, the, the kind of the uh, best way forward, which would take care of uh, both right. um, human rights issues and both the, the soldiers' um, um, protection. Sophie Anmuth, as Reporters Without Borders, what would you like the Israeli government to do? Um, we would like them to say, well, it's the Knesset who will decide on this law. Um, but the Israeli government first has given its approval, and then Sichy um, Hanegbi has said that this law um, would actually damage the freedom of the press. So I think the government is trying to take a positive step, and we would like them to actually say yes, this bill is not necessary because there are really laws to protect the soldiers, there are laws against insults, defamation, and whatever. So. This new doesn't seem to be necessary. Okay, Sophie Anmuth, Matan Pareg, Danny Ayalon, and earlier Peter Lerner, I sincerely thank you all for joining us here on the Newsmakers. Okay.